Hello and welcome back to the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today we are going forward in the uh, book of Acts, continuing our Bible study, and we are on uh, chapter 27, where we ended uh, chapter 26. Paul was, uh, he was being uh, placed before certain noble people in the province where he's at right now ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ and they don't want to hear it so they have set up and arranged a meeting where he is placed before all the high-ranking authoritative people in that particular place where he's at so uh, that's where we're going to catch up at chapter 27 it says and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion, and he was of a, an august band. Okay, and then it says, And entering into a ship of the Adriatinium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, and one Artiscus of the Macedonian of Thessalonica being with us. Okay, so they're saying all the people that they had while they're on this ship. And they still have Paul as a prisoner among them, okay? And it says, And the next day we touched at uh, Sidon, and Julius courteously entered. He entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself, okay? So they allow Paul to go and maybe go into the restroom and uh, re re refresh himself, they said, and relieve himself more than likely. Because, again, they're on this ship sailing to another part of the uh, region. So it says, and when, he, uh, when we had launched from there, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds was contrary. And when we had sailed over the Sea of Cilicia a Pamphylia, and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy. He put us in, okay, put us in this ship, and the ship is sailing, um, it was a ship of Alexandria, and it's sailing into Italy, okay? So now they're going to travel into Italy. And it says, and when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against us, though they were scared, Sinaitis, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Simone and hardly passing it came into a place which is called the Fair Havens. And, and it was unto us was the city of Lycia. Okay, now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul administered them, okay? So it had a little time had went past, and they were still sailing on this ship through. They had went through uh, Italy, passed over uh, certain cities, and Paul had been on a fast. Okay, so now it's saying Paul is admonishing them. So he's getting ready to speak. Okay, so verse ten says, "And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be hurt." And much danger, not only of the the, uh, the cargo and ship, but also of our lives. Okay, he says. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Okay, so here we have this man of God in the mix of them on the ship, and he's telling them that he's perceiving his perception, his discernment from the Holy Spirit is that. This ship is not going to make it, okay? He perceives that they're going to lose their life. But they ignored him. They didn't believe him because, again, they don't think he's anything anyway. So whatever he has to say, they're not acknowledging what comes out of his mouth because they disregarded him as anybody of importance. And that's sometimes how people do people, that um, they feel like that way toward them. But, you know, of course... We know Paul's position here. He is the saint. He is the one filled with the Holy Spirit. And he is the one sent to them to preach and give them a message from God, basically about salvation and the new covenant 
and Jesus Christ. Okay, so they're just not perceiving it and they're not welcoming that at all. So then we go on to verse 12, and then because the haven was not commodious to winter, the more part advised to depart there also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete and lies toward the southwest and the northwest. Okay, so they're saying that the weather wasn't suitable um, in this particular place where they're at. And so it says, and when, and when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing there, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after these arose against it a tempestuous wind. Okay, and this is the name of the wind. It was called the Eurocletus. Eurocletus. That was the name of the wind. Now, again, Paul has already told them that he perceived through his discernment that it was not going to be a uh, good trip and it was going to place their lives in danger that he didn't think that they should continue on. But they still did not heed his warning because he's telling them, stop. But he, they are determined to go. Okay, verse 15, and when the ship was caught and it could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under certain under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat. Okay, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should call, or excuse me, lest they should fall into the uh, quicksands strict sail and so were driven okay so when so we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest the next day they lighted the ship and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship okay so they're really going through it with this ship the wind is whipping that ship around and about is what it sounds like to me and they're really catching it but again paul told them about about this okay and uh the third day we cast out with one with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. So, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. So Paul is saying, I tried to tell y'all, but y'all didn't want to listen again. And, you know, I'm quite sure being a born again believer filled with the Holy Spirit. This was not his first encounter with that type of spirit. And it would not have been his last either, because even ourselves today, we know that we face those type of spirits also where you might tell a person, and they may think something totally different because of their perception. And you may be seeing things based on <clears throat> the discernment of God. I take a little second there. And so um, you may see things totally different. Just like in this case right here, Paul was seeing with God's eyes what was ahead because he could see prophetically. But they could not. And so he could see that there was a trap ahead and he wanted to guide them around it. So then it goes on to say, verse 22, and now I urge you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but the ship. For there stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am, I, but he said, I was, I am and whom I serve. And he's saying, you know, this angel stood by him because he's, you know, he know he's part of the kingdom. And the angel told him to fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And God has given thee all that, all them that sail with thee. So he's telling him all the people that sailing with him, God has given them into his hands. So they shall all be saved. And they shall all be born again. They were all created for this moment in time for salvation. Okay. And this particular event is the event that's going to drive them into their faith and believing the authority that Paul is operating in is truthful and real and good. Because it's saving them right now on the ship. So verse 25 says, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God 
that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they should draw near to come to some country and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. So then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for that day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. So he's saying everybody in the ship is going to be saved. And so then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the 14th day that we have tarried and continued fasting and having taken nothing. Yeah, they haven't eaten nothing. They, they fasted 14 days. He says, Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not any hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. So here's Paul still even, you know, in the midst of all that they've done to him. He's still praying for them, praying with them, and praying for safety for them. So he says, then were they all of good cheer and they also took some meat and we were and when we were all in the ship 260 souls 16 souls and when they had eaten enough they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea and then the daytime came and they knew not the land but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded if it were possible to thrust the ship into it so when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoist up the mantle to the wind and made toward the shore. Okay, so here they're heading towards safety. They're heading toward the shore and falling into a place where two seas met. They ran the ship aground and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hind part was broken with the violence of the waves. Uh-oh, so they started having trouble again. So the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. <laughs> and the rest, some up on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Okay. So at the commandment, they were commanded to go on boards and to get up off this ship and uh, go over to land. But they were all still safe. They were all escaped. They escaped that. But again, and it was at the word in the mouth of Paul because God was speaking to him and God was speaking through him. Just like he does with our uh service today you know uh, how the lord will speak through people and give us guidance counsel and leading warnings of things ahead that we <clears throat> don't want to you know go into so before i leave this video today i want to pray for uh the warnings and the calls and the heeds the heavenly father has given all of us in the mighty name of christ jesus that we would receive them that we would heed them that he would make them so loud and so you know, um, open to us that we would not be able to resist the fact that he's speaking to us and warning us and telling us, uh, giving us a message, heeding us in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, because we want to always hear and have our ears open to what the Lord is saying, because he says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. And in this particular passage, the spirit was speaking through Paul to heed them a warning. So God bless you all, and thank you for joining me on this Feed My Sheep Foundation video study today, where we have studied Acts chapter 27, and I will look forward to studying with you again on the Bible Study Channel.